welcome to a special edition of Meet the Leaders, City Hall Edition. I'm Dara Wells, and we are talking to members of the New York City Council. We are so lucky to have Ben Kalos. He represents District 5 in Manhattan. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, a uh, lot on your plate today. You have a stated meeting. Uh, you folks get together every couple of weeks and hash out issues uh, and uh, present bills. Uh, but you were known as the elected official who stood up to real estate to prevent a very tall tower from being built. That's correct. And so there's tall buildings, and they're good, they're good places to have tall buildings, but they're these super scrapers for billionaires uh, displacing affordable housing all over the city. And they wanted to build some in my district in a fully residential neighborhood. And I said, enough is enough. We're not going to take money from real estate. They can't buy me. They can't buy our neighborhood. We're not selling it out. And we did something that changed the rules. Instead of just throwing up our hands, saying the words as of right and walking away, we organized. And we went building by building in my neighborhood. I've been to almost every building in the neighborhood. And I talked to my neighbors. And we raised about seven figures. We led the first of its kind grassroots rezoning. And we've now changed the heights that folks can build in uh, a part of my district. And we're hoping to really replicate that model anywhere and everywhere. Residents should have a say in what their city looks like. What part of the district was this specifically? Uh, this was in the East 50s. So. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, that, uh, you look at that area and it is tall building after tall building, so much construction going on. And, and listen, if you're going 200, 300, 400, that's fine, but 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet, that's what the tower was going to be. It was, I think, going to be 1,200 or 1,400. And so we drew the line on Billionaire's Row Whoa. and we said uh, that real people need to live here. You know, um, uh, the Upper East Side is, is a part of your district. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, when we hear that, we think, oh, the, the richest of the rich the ritziest of the ritziest, but you know, the real people who live there aren't there. I mean, uh, not, not to take anything away from millionaires and billionaires, I'm sure they're very fine people, but you know, people who live in New York who are really, you know, struggling to stay here and, and to live a decent life. More people who qualify for food assistance mm -hmm. live in my district who don't get it than anywhere else in the city. So we see a lot more people who are food insecure, not getting the services they need. I actually introduced legislation and the city's actually agreed to study it which says that if you pay your taxes we should take the information you're giving the government and use it to determine uh, what benefits you qualify for so we could just send somebody a snap card in the mail right. and uh, they wouldn't really have to do much more than just pay their taxes or apply for benefits once and then just get the services they need. There's no reason anyone needs to go hungry. Yeah, uh, my next question would be, why are so many people not getting the benefits that are owed to them? It's bureaucracy. Folks don't know that they qualify. The, the paperwork is impossible. And what's weird is, if you pay your taxes, we know whether you rent or own. Mm -hmm. We know how many people live in your household. We know what you make. Why do you have to fill out applications for other pieces? It's, it's yeah. ridiculous, and government can do better. Yeah. Well, speaking of government doing better, um, you are also known as the council member who wanted to make the council a full-time job. Because before this, you know, you guys could do this almost on the side. You could have another job, and then this would almost be, I don't want to say an afterthought, but in some people's minds, that's what it was. Literally, the law allowed for a council member to be voting on something that might affect uh, a soda company mm -hmm. and have that soda company retain them, pay them millions of dollars to provide legal services or other services, and then vote on whatever business they might have before the city. And now that's against the law. Now city council members can't have outside income. There's stringent limitations on it. And it's a full-time job. We work for you, the people. And uh, I think that is an important ethics reform. And I hope to see it not only that it's, now that it's happened in the city council, I'm hoping to see it in Albany and everywhere else in government. You, what, if, do you think that it's possible that Albany could go the way of the city on this count? I think all we can do is lead by example. Mm -hmm. uh, we've led, and hopefully Albany will follow. 
Well, hopefully, yes, because um, by Albany not following, a number of uh, lawmakers have gotten in trouble for the very reason that you state. It's just, it's a temptation. Mm -hmm. um, there are conflicts of interest, and um, if it's out there, I mean, you're, there's a temptation, and it's not fair uh, to the voters and the constituents of the people who send you to do their work. Absolutely. All right. Um, we'll continue. Um, you raised a lot of money to improve parks. Why was that so important to you? The Upper East Side is one of the densest census tracts in America. We have just so many people living on top of each other. And as a result, we have some of the least parkland per capita in the city. We're, we're in the bottom four. And so what little parkland we have is just in such bad shape. Mm -hmm. uh, I love to run along the East River Esplanade. Mm -hmm. And before I got elected, it was literally falling into the river. Uh, while I was in office, a huge chunk, about one block long, just collapsed into the river next to Gracie Mansion. And so knowing that this was coming, I've secured over $150 million from public and private sources to get the Esplanade rebuilt. And so all the way from uh, 51st Street to uh, 96th Street, which is pretty much the waterfront of my district, sure. we are seeing investment like we've never seen before uh, from Mayor de Blasio, who's put in, uh, I think up at this point he may be at $135 million. And then we've seen tens of millions of dollars coming from the private sector. and. Uh, we're going to have a new uh, waterfront on the east side. And uh, I think it's a model, and I hope I can bring it to the rest of the city one day. You know, it is also an investment, because the waterfront, when it's clean mm -hmm. and, de and developed properly, is gorgeous. It's an asset for the city. I don't know why New York has been so behind on this. We need to make sure that we take stock of the property we own, and we keep it properly maintained. Uh, you don't get ribbon cuttings when you maintain property, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. Okay, Ben, we are fast running out of time. Um, any last uh, point you'd like to make or, or what you'd like your constituents to know? Uh, I think that when folks look at government, they may feel like uh, it may not always represent them and they may not want to get involved. And that's exactly the problem, which is democracy requires people to be involved. And we see a lot of elected officials taking money from one group of people mm -hmm. and then promising different things to voters. Right. Uh, so I've been pushing for something for, called a full public match, which would say that every single small dollar an elected official raises from residents would be matched. So they would never have to take money from real estate again. They wouldn't have to take money from special interests. They could literally run for office on small dollars from the neighborhood. And as folks are looking at their elected officials, if they hear their elected officials say one thing, but then that elected official is taking five, ten, fifty thousand dollars from somebody else who disagrees with them, I would say follow the money to see what the elected official is actually going to do. And I think that the most important thing that residents can do if they want funding for their schools, their parks, uh, and if they want government to do what's right every time is get full public financing for the city of New York and the state. Very true. Show up and especially vote. Yes. Absolutely. Ben Kalos, what a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on the program. My pleasure. And this has been a special edition of Meet the Leaders. We are at City Hall talking to members of the New York City Council. I'm Dara Wells. Thanks for joining us.